Hey everyone, welcome to today's video and today I want to share with you some tips on how to save money when buying watercolors. Now if you are brand new to watercolors, I hope that my next video will be what I consider the most affordable or best choices for a beginner's set so i do think if you're just starting out with watercolors it's probably a bit easier just to buy a curated set that someone already picked the colors for you but you if you have one of those or a couple of those and you want to expand into other brands you want to try new things then i hope today's video will help you <coughs> save money and these are the things that i keep in mind now whenever i want to buy a new watercolor which doesn't happen very often because i have a very large collection so believe me when i tell you that i know what it's like to kind of want to try everything but there are things worth considering and checking before you make an investment <clears throat> if you're new to my channel hi my name is Irit I do watercolor videos mixed media videos junk journaling videos I try to review new products occasionally but in 2020 my focus is on a low buy so trying to use what I have and when I do purchase new things to try to think about you know the impact that they have so where they come from how they're made uh, all those interesting things and uh, yeah I hope you'll join me for more videos please subscribe and ring the bell so you'll get notified when I post new videos and let's get started with today's video my first tip would be to go for a metal tin a lot of the cheapest sets that you can find on the market come in a plastic palette now some of them are really nice um, this for example is a very very affordable Winsor Newton Cotman palette however the problem starts when you broaden your stash and try different brands because with the plastic palettes many many times it will only fit the pans of the brand that uh, made these palettes so for that reason i really think if possible um, try to avoid getting these because they will limit you. If you're anything like me and you really want to try different brands and different colors and all kinds of things, uh, in the long run, you will find the plastic palettes very limiting. Uh, of course, the exception to this rule is these types of palettes. Uh, this one is really fantastic. This is by... I think Magello, I'm not sure, but it's fantastic. It's very, very affordable. However, you can see that um, you can, it's made not for pens, it's made for squeezing paint out of a tube, which means you're not limited to any specific pen and you can use any kind of color that comes in a tube, but once you squeeze out that paint, you're kind of stuck with it. And that's why at the end of the day, I really prefer to use the metal tins because I can customize my palettes and move my paints around, come up with um, like uh, seasonal palettes or dedicate them to, uh, this one for example is my neutrals palette go with a brand like one brand per palette if you know you keep growing your collection so this one for example has a combination of Aquarius and White Knights this one has uh, my favorite Van Gogh watercolors at the end of the day the metal ones allow you to play around with different um, pans 
sizes. You can fit half pants, you can fit full pants. So I have to go with the metal tins. Now the sets that come, that brands sell, that come in metal tins are usually very pricey, especially when compared to the same brand's plastic palette versions. But you can find online, for example, um, from this brand, you can find empty ones that sometimes even come with empty half pans or full pans in them, and they are really affordable. So I would go with that. The next tip, I have a long list, so let's hope this video is not a gajillion years uh, long, is to try introductory sets. A lot of brands have those and they tend to be good value. Now, I don't recommend getting an introductory set from every single brand, but it is a good way that for the most part is economical to test out uh, a brand. And some brands offer really nice combinations. For example, We'll get to that in a second. In a second, uh, Jackson's from uh, Jackson's Art Supply. It's an online shop. They have sets, uh, for example, like a blue set or a cobalt set or a cadmium set. So if you want to try something, um, those are good value. However, if you do kind of know yourself a little bit and you have painted with watercolors and there are colors that you don't use, I you know, the fact that it's a good deal, it's only a good deal if you use most of the paint. So make sure that you like the paints in the set um, before you purchase. The most common types of watercolors come in either pans or tubes. Now you have the half pans and the full pans. These will fit the small ones about two milliliters of product and this um, somewhere around five depending on the size. There are different sizes of pans. And then there are the tubes. So some common sizes are the five, sorry, the five milliliter tubes. And then you have 15 mils. Um, Sennelier does 10 mils. And I think uh, Sennelier also has 21 mils. This one from Van Gogh is 10 mils. And Cotman, which is the student grade paint of Windsor and Newton, they have these 21 mills and then Schminke has 15, um, Daniel Smith 15 and this is Lucas. This is a German brand if I'm not mistaken. Oh no this is made in England but I think the brand is German. So this is a 24 tube. Usually especially within a brand the bigger the tube the more economical the paint is so you pay less per milliliter. However if you're not going to use the whole tube, it's probably better to buy a small one. But if you think you will use, eventually these last for years and years and years, like 10 years, not a problem longer than that. Uh, also probably not a problem. Um, if you think you will eventually use it, then it's better to save up for the larger tubes. Another tip that can save you money is to try the house brands. So for example, Jackson's have their own watercolor paint. Now, the thing is that Jackson's is a really good example. They have brushes, they have watercolor paints, and they have other paints under their name. Now, the store did not start a factory to make brushes and paint. They are creating those paints in someone's factory and the rumor is that the Jackson's paint is like is made by Sennelier. I'm not sure if that is correct but I can tell you that I have tried their pen paint and it is very 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 similar or almost one one might say identical in formula to what I know of Sennelier. So 
because it's their house brand, it's very affordable. They have full pans, they have large tubes, and they have all kinds of different sets. So I would definitely recommend trying those. Some pigments are expensive and trying a paint with those pigments of a house brand like Jackson's might be a good affordable way of testing uh, more expensive pigments and seeing how you like them. Speaking of pigments, it is worth it to kind of do your research and if you find a cheaper brand that you enjoy the formula, for me, for example, it's the Van Gogh um, brand by, it's the kind of more affordable line of paint that Talents make. Rembrandt is their classic artist grade watercolor paint and then they have the Van Gogh, which is what I have here. I love the formula of this paint. This is a more recent discovery for me and I really, really enjoy it. It's beautiful, it's creamy, it's pigmented, um, it's vegan, it's made in Europe, which is more local to me, and I absolutely don't see a reason to invest in anything more expensive for the pigments that they offer. So it's really worth to look into which pigment you're buying. Sometimes that can be tricky because brands name things differently. So for example, Windsor Blue or Sennelier Blue or Aquarius uh, Blue or I think White Knights also have their own um, colors. Check out the pigment and see if you can't find a cheaper alternative and also, you know, make sure you're not buying the same colors again and again, which I have done and you just end up with duplicates in your stash. And especially if it's not a color, for me, I can have five different kinds of ultramarine blue. I know I'll eventually use them because I go through that color fast. But other colors like phthalo blue, for example, I don't like it. And I have too many versions of it that I'll probably never use. Reminds me, I should find someone to gift those to. Another uh, tip is to buy relatively local to you. Uh, for me, for example, I'm in Europe. I try to buy European brands. The brands from the Far East or Asia, so things like the um, Russian White Knights are still a good deal here for the most part. Uh, probably from the Far East because the labor is cheaper there. But American watercolors tend to be more expensive and not worth the uh, money for me, with the exception of really special pigments that I feel I can't find a European alternative. So for me, some colors by Daniel Smith are worth investing in, but those will be the really special mixtures or pigments that I really, really love and use, and then I'll probably buy the large tube. So for example, this is Moon Glow. Well, it'll take me a while to go through this 15 milliliter tube, but this is my third one. So for me, this is a good investment. I know this is a lot of information and it's very, very overwhelming. I will do soon another video showing you what I think are the best most affordable to a degree <laughs> sets for a beginner so you know if you just want to set if you find all this very confusing very overwhelming uh, I completely understand that's how I started with ready-made sets I hope that will be the next video but if you are a collector of watercolors or you really love trying different shades different brands I highly recommend uh, looking into the tips that I gave you here and if you want to see another video in this kind of format with tips about brushes or sketchbooks or papers, then please leave me a comment and I would love to make one for you. I really want to help people buy the right supplies for them and not just end up with piles of unused paint. So hopefully you found this helpful and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye!